Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. As you know, tomorrow we will mark five months since the horrific terrorist attack by Hamas on Israel. And you will recall that the European Union immediately and unreservedly condemned in the strongest possible terms this attack and including the taking of the hostages. And ever since then, we have called for their immediate and unconditional release. I want to make that point very clear here in Israel again. And we'll continue to call for their unconditional and immediate release. Their suffering, their plight must come to an end. But equally, the suffering of Palestinian civilians in Gaza must come to an end, too. This suffering is horrendous. You know the figures. You know the death toll. You know the destruction. And you know the inadequacy of the humanitarian aid that our humanitarian partners are able to get into Gaza and throughout Gaza. There is massive shortage of food, especially in the northern Gaza. There is massive shortage of basic services. This plight, this suffering also has to come to an end. And that's why we are calling for an immediate humanitarian pause, ceasefire, whatever. And we are calling for an adequate provision of humanitarian aid to all those who need it. We're trying to do everything as the European Union in, in that direction. We have allocated more than 200 million euros for humanitarian aid for the occupied Palestinian territories, and particularly for Gaza, since October 7. We have launched humanitarian air bridge. That by now, via more than 40 flights, has delivered more than 1,800 tons of in-kind assistance for Palestinian civilians in Gaza. But this is not enough. And what others are trying to do is also not enough. That's why we are calling for additional efforts. We are exploring every possible avenue for the provision of the badly, desperately needed humanitarian aid in Gaza. We are trying to support the airdrops, although these airdrops, as you know, are not a very efficient way of delivering humanitarian aid, and will never be able to ensure sufficient quantity of humanitarian aid that is needed. We also support the opening of maritime corridor, but there is a very handy solution, a solution at hand that can be provided immediately, and that is opening of additional land crossing, especially to the north of Gaza, in order to address this urgent situation, a situation where, according to a credible information from our own humanitarian partners, people are starving. This has to end. In my talks with the uh, Israeli authorities, I also pointed out to the need to de-escalate the situation in the West Bank, where we have seen a spike in demolitions, in settler violence, in incursions of security forces, in the number of casualties, 
this also needs to stop. So this is what uh, my visit here is primarily about. Uh, we will not spare any effort to bring an end to the suffering, to the plight of Israeli hostages and of Palestinian civilians. But we need, we need cooperation, primarily from Israel, in order to get there. And this is what we are trying to do. So much for the introduction from my side. I'm now open for your questions. I did raise uh, in my discussions the urgent need for a ceasefire because our humanitarian partners indeed are saying they are not able to do their work, to do their job in the conditions uh, that prevail with the ongoing military operations, with the ongoing bombardment and shelling. Uh, so yes, uh, there is an urgent need for a ceasefire. And this was also something that 26 EU member states called for very recently. I would like to recall the fact that the UN Security Council back in October last year, October last year, called for extended humanitarian pauses of sufficient duration in order to ensure the provision of humanitarian aid. And as we know, since then, there has only been one such humanitarian pause in November. So another one is long overdue in order to address the, urgent, the urgency of humanitarian catastrophe unfolding there. With regard to the <clears throat> death toll, yes, I pointed to the fact that this death toll is unbearable and that it raises serious questions with regard to the respect of some of the fundamental principles of international humanitarian law, like principle of proportionality and the principle of distinction between combatants and civilians. Uh, this toll is not tolerable. That's why we are calling for a ceasefire and that's why we are calling for a humanitarian surge in order to prevent famine, in order to prevent uh, further avoidable deaths. I pointed to the fact that the death toll is intolerable. And the death toll, as you know, is over 30,000 people. In five months, that means the average death toll is 200 per day. And that is what I call intolerable.
see alternative that is uh, that the Ursula von der Leyen is going to explore in Cyprus. I think there was, there was openness on the side of Israeli authorities with regard to the opening of additional land crossing. And I do hope that this will materialize. Because as I said earlier, other options uh, are either insufficient quantity-wise, like airdrops, uh, and they also have some other shortcomings, like you know, how to ensure the receiving structure on the ground once you drop uh, parachutes uh, with uh, uh, containers of uh, humanitarian aid, how to ensure the distribution. These are all challenges connected with the airdrops. But the biggest ch challenge is quantity. Uh, to, via airdrops, you just can't, can't replace humanitarian aid provided via land routes. Uh, on the uh, Maritime Corridor, we very much welcome the Cypriot Initiative. Uh, we welcome every, every possible route for the provision of humanitarian uh, aid. Uh, there are some challenges with regard to the Maritime Corridor uh, that need to be addressed, uh, namely the drop-off point or the unloading point uh, in Gaza, uh, where there is at the moment uh, no port facility. Uh, there is also the need to ensure receiving structure because our humanitarian partners consistently point out to the need to ensure proper reception and distribution of humanitarian aid. The scenes that you were able to see with regard to you know, uh, crowds of hungry people running after parachutes uh, falling on the ground, this is not the proper way of handling receiving and distributing humanitarian aid. So this, these are the challenges that are there uh, and that need to be addressed, and it would be much easier to address them if, A, there is additional land crossing available, and second, if there is a ceasefire. I cannot, I cannot um, speculate on that one. As you know, these uh, discussions or negotiations are ongoing. Uh, European Union is not directly involved, but we support every effort to reach a ceasefire. We support every effort to achieve a release of, of uh, hostages, and we support every effort to increase humanitarian aid to the levels necessary in the current situation. I could not uh, answer with regard to the time frame, but I can say that, yes, uh, Israeli side is optimistic and positive about such a maritime corridor, which I find encouraging. Not specifically, I think that the position of the European Union is uh, clear. Um, as you know, uh, last uh, Friday, the European Commission decided to continue funding of UNRWA. 
We have contracted last Friday 16 million of uh, humanitarian aid, and this week uh, further uh, 50 million of um, assistance funding to UNRWA is expected to be contracted. Uh, we are conscious of the uh, vital role that UNRWA is playing, especially in current circumstances in Gaza. Uh, this doesn't change the fact that we take uh, allegations against UNRWA staff, some of the UNRWA staff, very seriously. Uh, but we believe that these investigations have, must be thoroughly investigated and acted upon the findings of investigations. For the time being, UNRWA, in our view, has responded um, properly to these allegations. We have been discussing with UNRWA of, about various, various um, measures that need to be taken. In particular, we expect full cooperation uh, of UNRWA, but also of Israel, with the ongoing investigation launched by the United Nations Office of Internal Oversight Services, which is ongoing, and also with the work of the uh, independent review group led by former French Foreign Minister uh, Catherine Colonna. We support uh, these uh, tracks. And in addition, we also had uh, some of our own more technical uh, requests and expectations concerning audit, concerning vetting of the staff, and strengthening the internal UNRWA uh, oversight service. And UNRWA has responded positively to all those, and this uh, allows, in our view, uh, the Commission, the European Commission, to continue its funding. And I underline the importance of the UNRWA's role, which, according to all other our humanitarian partners active on the ground in Gaza is uh, irreplaceable. Uh, Sam McDonald from the Associated Press. Uh, I'm hoping you can uh, detail uh, what the aid that you want to send in the Gaza might be. Can you talk about how many trucks, uh, size, and supplies, what kind of supplies the staff is needed, how much it would cost, and how long you would like to do it? The most cost-efficient way to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza is over land. That's point one. Point two, you are all familiar with the figures of the number of trucks that uh, were going there before the October 7. You are, I think, also familiar with the figures going into several hundred of the trucks that would need it to be able it would need to be able to enter uh, daily uh, in view of the needs. And I'm sure that you are also familiar with the fact that the current numbers of trucks entering Gaza is well below that number. I also would like to note that uh, this number was actually higher in December and January before the ICJ ordering certain provisional measures, and that after that, uh, the number has fallen, which uh, is something that uh, needs to be remedied. There has to be an increase, increase in the volume of humanitarian aid entering Gaza, as well as the ability, in the ability of our humanitarian partners to operate throughout Gaza. And I repeat myself, I know, for that, we propose a plea for opening of additional land crossing and uh, introducing a ceasefire. I see there are one last follow-up question. Uh, did you discuss the TA's role in the aftermath of the war in Gaza? With both, we of course mentioned what has been a long-standing position of the European Union, and that is that uh, the only way to peace is a way based on two-state solution, in which, in our view, uh, uh, revived or reinvigorated Palestinian authorities would have a role. This is a position of the European Union. And uh, 
Yes. You, on the other hand, are familiar with the recent vote in the Knesset, where an overwhelming majority of uh, members of the Knesset voted against the two-state solution, but without offering what other solution uh, uh, could be there. The European Union remains uh, on its position that uh, the two-state solution is uh, the only solution that will bring peace to the region. Thank you.